I'm Chris Moses, and this is Gospel Progression University. So years ago, when I heard this chord progression, right, this is from uh, Israel, Lord, you're good. And I heard this. Okay, and I said, man, I have to memorize that. After, you know, listening to this over and over again, I have to memorize it. So a novice or a beginner or a person that's just ignorant of how this actually works would look at something like this and it's simple chords. Just major chords being played in your right hand over a particular note, right? Nothing hard about that. It's almost like the first thing that you learn when you're starting to play. But what is it that a musician, a pro is looking for to use to hack into this to say, hey, let's just take it from being something that's very simple and basic to actually making it sound harmonic and making music out of it that is more interesting in texture. So what is this hack that no one really pays much attention to? So a pro is gonna ask themselves three questions. How can I use my knowledge of the major scales to create interesting color and harmony? Here's the thing, if you're gonna play keys, you need to know the major scales in all 12 keys, like a Maury Povich guest knows the outcome of a paternity test. So don't get it twisted. 12 key performance is vastly different than actually knowing all your major scales in every key. So one way to look at this as we're learning or as we know all 12 major key scales that we learn our modes. Now, when I say modes, all they are are just positions. So there are seven of them because there are seven keys in the major scale and they just repeat. And knowing them makes a huge difference because they are just changing position. So if we go from C to C, we would say that's the first mode of the major scale, it's the Ionian. So we just shift positions until we got all the way to B. The second position would be the D Dorian. The third position would be the E Phrygian. Your fourth position would be F Lydian. The fifth position would be G Mixolydian. Sixth position would be A Aeolian. And finally, the last position is your B Locrian. Now, these aren't just names. Musicians use these things all the time. I don't know why they came up with these names. They're Greek, and I would have named them a lot differently, but I wasn't there. So when we're playing these modes and we change position, they're actually shifting the harmony. They're giving us another interesting color and another interesting tone. This is what we're hearing when Israel Horton is playing this. But how is this actually working? So we know the modes, all right? We know all seven of them. Big deal. We saw that he changed whenever he was playing and going from the first chord, you know, to the second chord and the third and the fourth chord are, are different. But there's a couple of things that we have to pay attention to and understand first. The second thing a musician would ask themselves is what key is it in and what is the tonal center? And I always say, don't worry so much about the key. This is correct because people will stick in to the key and won't venture outside of it because they neglect context for music. And music is context. Notes by themselves don't make a difference. They actually have to be played in sequence to make music. We have the tonal center, which is A. Next, we have the key. So we know that we're in the key of E. So it's safe to say that the modes apply to the key of E major too. Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian. Uh, six is Aeolian, seven is Locrian, and back to one again. So if we start here, and this A is in the bass. A is given the tonal center. One, two, three, four. We're in the fourth mode of E major. Mode one, two, three, four is the Lydian. So our first note there, we see, is the Lydian of the fourth mode. We could say that, okay, well, this is uh, a Lydian then. That's the first mode that we're in. We could also say, though, for argument's sake, because we're playing over an A, that we're in uh, A Ionian because the Ionian is the first mode of the major scale. Or, to again, finally, we could say that we are playing in uh, D, or A rather, Mixolydian, because D has A major in it as well, so does A major, the major key, and E does as well. But for context here, remember, the notes are And this is going to imply E. So if we start here at one, two, three, four position, this note here, or this chord, I should say, 
would be the Lydian. Definitely this chord here. Because the B over an A is the sound of the Lydian. The, I can just hear it. This is why it's important for us to get our ears trained. And furthermore, so we know that neither A nor D has a D sharp in it diatonically. And diatonic just means that we're sticking to the key. The first mode for the first two chords, we can use or say that, okay, we're playing uh, A Lydian. So now when we go now to the next position, all right? So what's going on here? This is the first time we see that we're leaving the key of E diatonically. Well, hold on a second. Yeah. We have this here, this C sharp, D sharp, E, and F sharp. This gives us the context. Like I said before, music by itself or notes by themselves, it's not music. They have to move in some kind of sequence or some kind of intervals. We wouldn't say that the microwave is making music. It's a beeping sound. A car alarm or EKG machine has a single tone. So it doesn't give you any context. Just like these notes here, repeat. In other words, the context of this note here can be A major. It can be D major. This one over here, all right, well, we can say that it's, it's E major. We can see that because it, it definitely harmonically and melodically, it gives the context. But the entire thing, if we look at it, we look at it and we take a bird's eye view of this entire passage, we see that it's either in B major or it's in E major, but the notes harmonically don't support B major because this is the key of B major. And we know that we don't see an, an, an A in there anywhere, diatonically. So now we go from here and then we go here. So we said that we're using the Lydian mode because we're in mode number four of the key of E major, right? So now we move from there. Now we're leaving it diatonically. We go from this chord to this chord here. So what would this be? So now when we are playing this position here, we say, okay, well, we have the C over this A and this is an A minor. You're going to find this in two places. So think about the first place we would find it. If it's an A minor, I'm going to look in two, three, four, five, six. C, the key of C major, the sixth mode of C major is the Aeolian, A Aeolian, because it's being played over A. Or if it's in the key of F major, F major has the C over the A as well. So Israel could say that I want to play or use the Aeolian scale. Or you can say that I want to use the Phrygian scale. Because we have A here and it supports it. Why this works again is because the Phrygian scale is F major, one, two, three, the third mode of the major scale. Remember, Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian. The chord that we come up with is a minor chord if we go up in thirds, major third here and another uh, major third here. We have a minor third, a minor chord rather. Okay? And in the key of C, we go all the way and the chord that we have is a minor chord again. So we can vacillate between those two. So we see the last chord here. It's D over A. So the harmony is telling me, uh, I know that it's gonna be in the key of G because there's only one sharp that I have here. And we don't have, uh, A is not sharp, B, nor is G, and C definitely is it. So that tells me it's in the key of G major. So if I'm playing the key of G major, I know the first mode is the Ionian, the second one is going to be the Dorian, and that happens to be the A, so it has to be A Dorian. So we see how that's represented in the key of G as well, and that's how modes actually work. And what ties them in are the melodies. The melody gives you context and also gives you a relationship between each of the keys. So in essence, we're playing in one key here, and then we move to another key here. But knowing the context helps. Why? Because we can say one, well, following this, we know that we're in E. But if, for example, we wanted to color the tones further, we can use other harmonics that match those modes. But the pivot notes are the notes that overlap. Because we know, for example, E, we can have either C major, all right? We can have E major. We can have A minor. There's a few things, at least three things that we can actually use 
that involves the key of E. I mean, we can even have E diminished, but then with the notes, it changes the context. But whenever we take this random arrangements of notes and say, let's come up with a melody, well, it's easy to do that. Let's pick a key. Pick a key with seven tones. Well, great. And we put together chords. But at least the modes are not just for music nerdiness. They actually give you some sense of the harmonies that are behind learning the song. So when you go to sit down and you know you can't figure out a song on YouTube and you put your headphones in, when you hear sounds like this, you know that this is vastly different from this, which is different from this. And if you hear them together, your ears are not saying, what's going on? Well, I'm hearing so many things. I hear this top note, but I'm not sure what's going on. The first thing you can look at is your context. Okay, we established that. We have the key center. What is my knowledge of the major scale? What do I know about it? Okay, well, I know the modes and I know that there's seven notes in the major scale. What's the third thing? Which notes overlap? And what we're looking for are the shared notes that give us the connection between each mode. We're not so much looking for a harmonic connection as we are for a melodic connection. So when we have these chords here, the first chord, like I said, is gonna be in the key of E. We're not leaving the key of E, but we have a different sound. So if you're not sure, man, I don't know what key it's in, you know, the, the music or the person, whoever told me that this is in this particular key. Well, take them at the word. They're probably not lying to you. They want you to learn it. But you have to trust your ears to say, well, this is the sound of the, of the linear. I know this is a minor sound over here. But why is it being played over this note? Well, I know that that note is an A. It's by itself. I can hear that because it's kind of standing off to the side. But then when they start playing different harmonies over it, the first thing you do is just kind of ignore the harmonies, but pay attention to that melody. And then you can think of the possible ways, the more than likely modes that it fits. A lot of times it isn't a fancy chord with a sharp 11, a flat two, the square root of three. It's a simple chord, simple triads, but in a different mode. This is why it's critical for you to learn every single major key scale in every key. You have to learn this. Then you can move on to more complex things. But it's the simple things like this that gives songs and gives the music its color. That's why I put together the mode cheat sheet. It's a free guide that you can download that'll help you to understand how the modes work so you can actually utilize them and use them in your playing and get some great results. To download it, go to gospelprogressionsuniversity.com forward slash mode cheat sheet. God bless you, and I'll see you in the next video.